What's good peeps and welcome to my channel. Kevin here and today I'm going to be showing you my step-by-step -step process on how I created these shadow boxes from scratch. Now if you like what you see in this video, please like, comment, subscribe, let's get this channel out there, smash that notification bell and let's get this channel growing. <laughs> now if you guys want to see how I created this project step-by-step, -step, stay tuned to find out only on Create Kev. And to start this project off, I'm going to start by measuring my plexiglass just to make sure that everything is the exact same size that I ordered. Because we're going to be building our frames around this size, we don't want anything to be skewed in the end and we don't want to be cutting plexiglass because that gets messy. <laughs> Now I'm going to start by creating the outside frame for the shadow boxes themselves. So I'm going to mark where I'm going to make my cut. I'm then going to make that cut. And once I find that length of that board, I'm going to use that as a template for four sides of the eight size that I need. And now that we've got all of our pieces cut, it's time to move on to cutting the backer board. So essentially what I'm going to do is use my miter saw because it's only 12 inches by 8 inches, so I can just rip this down. I'm just going to start by cutting that first cut, and then I can move on to cutting the second half of this so that that is completely separated from my board. And now that I've got all of my pieces cut, I can start by opening up my new table saw. I'm so excited about this. It's really going to come in handy for this project. It's just a mini portable table saw, but it'll get the job done. So how I'm going to put this project together is I'm actually going to be cutting these little notches out of the wood so that my plexiglass can slide right into them. And so what I'm going to be doing is ripping out an 18th of an inch on the inside of all of my frames. And so once we put all of that together, it will sandwich that plexiglass in the middle. And so I can just continue on by ripping out the inside of all of my frames. And now that we've got all of those notches cut out of our frames, we can move on to staining. And I chose to go with this sun bleached color from Verithane because it's a very nice mix between tan and gray. And when you go out to Arizona, their interior design, a lot of their architecture is lots of whites and tans and terracottas and browns. It's a really cool mix, kind of that Western theme when you go out there. So I wanted to bring that vibe into these shadow boxes because this is going to be an Arizona theme with images from when we were out in Arizona and actual pieces from Arizona. It'll almost be like a memory box with a really cool theme. And I'm also going to be staining the background of one of my boxes in this sun bleached color because I'm going to be putting some rocks over the top of this and I really want those to stand out. And in my second box, I'm going to be staining the background in this carbon gray color. I'm going to be putting some gold leaves over this and I really want those to stick out just like the other box with the rocks. And with that being completed, we can start to assemble our boxes together with blue painters tape. And so we're starting to put these together so that we can start putting all of our objects that are going to go into the shadow box actually into the shadow box. <laughs> And now before putting my backer board on, I'm just going to make sure that everything is square with my square tool here just to make sure that while I'm putting all of my pieces into the box that those don't get skewed along with the frame. And now that our frame is squared up, we can start to put that backer board on just with another thing of blue painters tape. And then when that is all said and done, we can flip this bad boy over so that we can start to arrange the objects that are going to go into the shadow boxes. And for my first shadow box, I have these rocks that I got from Sedona, Arizona that are going to be going in here and they perfectly match the theme with the picture that's going into the shadow box because that was from one of our hikes going out to Sedona. So thought it was a pretty cool way of introducing the theme into the shadow box itself. And so I'm just going to be using some Gorilla Glue here to glue these pieces into the back of this shadow box. And what's really nice about the Gorilla Glue is that it expands and then contracts so it really starts to grip and it'll hold those rocks to the back of that board even though this is going on a vertical surface. I know that this is going to last basically forever because this glue is basically cement. <laughs> so basically I'm going to go rock by rock and glue that to the back of that shadow box and it's really nice because this stuff doesn't set right away so I can kind of maneuver these rocks as I need to and make sure that they aren't touching those frames in case anything kind of moves around when I need to go tack those in later. And so basically we're just going to be continuing to finish off the background of this shadow box. 
Now I'm gonna start on the decoration for my second shadow box. So I'm gonna be taking this crown that I received from my best friend when we were out in Arizona for her bachelorette party. And I'm gonna be breaking this up, very Mean Girls, Lindsay Lohan style, giving it out to everybody, no. <laughs> Basically what I found out with this was that the jeweler saw did not work out as well as I expected with this brass metal. So what I'm gonna be doing is actually taking those pieces and kind of bending them back and forth until they snap off. And I want these in about four inch sections so that I can start to kind of place them in the shadow box how I want them. And just like that, now we have all of our pieces cut out of our crown and we're gonna be moving on to our next step. Now to make these gold leaf parts kind of stand up a little bit, we're gonna use some clear hot glue and I'm just gonna be cutting these off in about one fourth of an inch little sections so that we can start to glue those underneath those leaves so that it starts to give it a little bit more dimension rather than just being glued right to that backer board and starting to give a few more layers than we would have had by just having one flat layer. And now that we're done with the decoration part, it's time to start on the graphics that are gonna go on the plexiglass of the inside of the shadow box. And now I'm gonna take the designs that I created in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm gonna be flipping them horizontally so that when I put them onto the other side of the plexiglass, they're actually facing forward. So the sticky side is gonna be up. And I absolutely love these designs that I created. This one's hand scripted by moi, and the other one is very modern and clean. So it just gives it a very cool feel. And now I can bring those two designs into the Cricut design space. This is where I'm gonna make sure that they're the exact same size that I need, that that background is transparent for that crisp cut. And then once that is all complete, we can start to arrange our graphics where we need them on our board. And once that is all done, we can start to get to cutting. And using the Cricut is super simple. You just turn it on, you open up the cool contraption. It's kind of futuristic and I don't know, semi-satisfying for some reason. And then I'm gonna load in my paper. And this is vinyl paper, so basically it's gonna be a sticker. And once you have everything stuck down, it's super easy and fast. You just click the go button and it does everything for you. So it creates this extremely precise and perfect cut that you would not be able to do by hand. It's exactly what you designed with little to no work on my end. <laughs> And just like that, our vinyl is cut out. Now I'm gonna take those cut designs and start to very gently peel those off of the sticky paper that they're on. And I'm actually just gonna take that and plop that onto a printed piece where I actually kept the outline so that once I do put my glass over this, I can align it perfectly to how I designed it so the layout will be exactly how it was on the computer. And same thing with my second Arizona graphic here. I just enlisted some tools because it's a very fragile design and I wanna make sure that I get this in the exact placement that I want it to be in. Now that we've got everything aligned, this is the nerve wracking part. So I'm just going to align the corner of my plexiglass with that corner of the actual trim that I printed out. And then we're just gonna press down so that this will stick to that backside of the plexiglass. And I'm just gonna kind of push down on that to make sure that all of those little bits and pieces are very much stuck to that before I pull it up. And then boom, that's the final result. It actually worked out very well. I was a little bit nervous about it, but we got her done. And now I need to move on to cutting some boards that my pictures are gonna be glued to. So essentially I'm just gonna take my miter saw here and cut some boards to four by six, and I have a few other smaller ones. But once I'm completely done with that, I'm gonna be cutting the backer kind of spacers for these boards so that they are lifted up over the kind of details that we have in the background. And now that we have all of those cut, I can start to assemble those in the actual shadow boxes themselves. I'm basically gonna find out what layout works best for the images first, and then I can kind of move around those gold leaves to make sure that everything compositionally works and flows well. And once I am confident with how that layout looks, I can start to hot glue my leaves down to the backer board. So I'm gonna try to kind of finagle these around those images, <laughs> and we haven't glued down those backer boards yet, so it makes it a little bit easier. But basically, I'm gonna start to arrange these and make sure that they're completely glued down to that board. And now it's time to glue down the boards that are gonna be holding up our images. So essentially I'm just gonna be taking my loved Gorilla Glue <laughs> that I always use, and I'm going to just put a good amount of that on the back there. And then I'm also gonna apply glue to the front so that I can put this kind of face board on the top of this and so that everything will be secured to that backer board. And so when I'm putting that face board on top, I wanna make sure that everything is very aligned because this is gonna be kind of cemented in place. So I'm not gonna be able to move it and we wanna make sure everything is perfect. 
And once everything does look perfect, I'm just gonna weigh that down with some paint that I had laying around so nothing shifts overnight. And I'm gonna do that exact same step with my other box. And once that's all weighed down, we can wait 24 hours for that glue to dry. 24 hours later. Now that everything is cured, it's time to glue our pictures to that board. So basically I'm gonna be using regular glue here. We don't want anything expanding because we don't want those pictures to buckle or wrinkle. So basically I'm just gonna put down a good amount of this glue. I'm gonna stick my picture to that wood directly. And then I'm gonna smush the glue around so that we have a very nice adhesion to that wood. And I'm doing this with a t-shirt so that I don't get any scratches or leave any fingerprints on these pictures because you'll see it forever because it'll be behind glass. <laughs> And same thing with my other images here. I'm just gonna be gluing them exactly like I did with my other image. Here it's a little bit more tricky because we need to make completely sure that these are very symmetrical and that nothing is a little bit off because with two images, if one of them is off, it's really gonna show. So we're just gonna make sure that everything is perfectly aligned and then we're gonna continue to glue these down. And now that all of the pieces are completed, I can start to put these together and I really love how these are turning out. The next step is going to be to start to assemble these together using nails so that they're completely finished. Now is kind of the point of no return. I need to take off this protective layer on the plexiglass and so I need to be extremely careful from this point on forward so that we don't get any scratches. My initial idea for this was for the plexiglass just to be able to slide into those notches that I created, but it was a little too snug, so I'm finding myself having to kind of force the plexiglass into one side of the frame, and then I'm just gonna kind of push it into the others. So it'll all work out in the end. Sometimes your plan doesn't go to plan, but you just have to adjust and kind of work with the material. So essentially, I'm just kind of snugging this in so that all of those frames kind of hold in that plexiglass, and I'm gonna re-tape any edges that need to be tightened up because the next step is gonna be shooting my one inch nails into each side of the frames, securing the frame, but not the backer board quite yet. And now it's time to secure that backer board to the frame. So I'm gonna take my one inch nails and shoot directly through that backer board into the frame. And I'm gonna try my best to get as close as I can to the edge without getting too close so that we actually have something to grip onto. So I wanna try my best to not get these nails to shoot through the front because we definitely do not want that. And six nails later, this should be able to keep this into place for basically forever. <laughs> so now that those are all secured into place, we can see the final result. We're definitely gonna have to dust this off, but that means that this one is complete. And then that means I can move on to my second shadow box. So for some reason, whenever you do it the second time, it always goes so much faster and easier. <laughs> I guess that's the learning process from the first time around. But basically, once this is all assembled with all the nails together, we can turn this around, we got a duster off, but then we're gonna finish it off with our last step. And that last step is gonna be filling in our nail holes with a matching color so that those kind of go away in appearance. And some of the nail holes, that blue painter's tape kind of got stuck in there, so this will start to color correct that. I'm gonna go over this about two different times so those nail holes go away. And once that's finished, we can call this project complete. Thank you guys so much for watching me make these shadow boxes. Woodworking is one of my favorite things to do, one of my passions, and I absolutely love making these videos. Now if you guys could, please help out the channel, like, share, and subscribe. Let's get this channel out there so we can get this channel growing. If you guys want to see any detailed shots of this project, go and hit up my Instagram at createkev, and if you want, go and check out my website at createkev.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.